Right now, we are officially in a drought, and these dry conditions require a lot of water for your plants. Our friend, meteorological goat, Ed Curran, went to the Chicago Botanic Gardens for a few tips from an expert on watering effectively and efficiently. Water keeps the Chicago Botanic Garden growing. Getting that river-fed water on delicate plants and trees is a huge job. All of this is watered by hand. Actually, watering is probably my main job all summer long and my most important job here at Chicago Botanic Gardens because otherwise you wouldn't have the beauty that you see around you right now. That is amazing. I mean, the color of those leaves. Senior horticulturist yes. Heather yes. Sherwood's watering starts Next at the, the break of day. Early morning when the sun comes up. It does take me about three to four hours every time I water to water everything appropriately and deeply, not just a shallow watering. You want it to penetrate down into the soil. You want to hit the soil. Leaf material doesn't matter, really. You want to get the roots wet. You actually don't want uh, moisture in between your leaves because uh, diseases and fungus can start happening, like that dreaded powdery mildew. Um, so watering your soil and where the water is needed most is more important than blanket watering everything. We have some fabulous lavender plants that Lauren is thankfully watering for us because actually you can see these guys are starting to wilt a little bit. And the nice thing that Lauren is doing is she's trying not to get the plant itself. She's actually going for more of the soil underneath. So when I go and I look at, to see about my containers if they need water, I, I do one of two things. If it's a nice big container, I just kind of push everything back and I look down and I look in and I have nice damp moist soil and so that's what I'm looking for. If it's a smaller container, what I like to do is just a weight check as an up oh, Yup, that's heavy enough. It's not gonna need water for a few days. Otherwise, again, I would check the soil to make sure it needs it. So when I start watering anything, I always check my pressure first so it's not too hard and I don't blow plants out of the way. And then I am low and slow in the sense I'm keeping low to my soil and I'm moving it quite frequently so that I don't have a problem with runoff. When watering a tree that's fairly new in planting, what you want to take in consideration is how big the root ball was and where the drip line is. What's a drip line, you say? Basically, if it was going to rain, where is the, the water going to fall off of the tree all the way around? And that is your drip line. So for me, I get to water a little bit of the grass now, but I want to water low to the ground. I don't really need to get any of the uh, trunk or leaves wet. I definitely want to water the mulch to make sure that is staying hydrated and keeping an even moisture for my tree. Watering will keep your lawn green, but it's not a crisis if you don't. Your lawn's not going to die if you don't water it for six weeks in a drought condition. You'll actually be saving water um, and also your time and energy a little bit. It'll crisp up and as soon as the weather cools off a little bit later into August, September and the rains hopefully return, um, it will green up. The other thing is if it's not growing, you don't have to mow it either. And so it's kind of a win-win if you let your lawn go maybe a little bit longer than you would like. And that may be the best tip I've heard. At the Chicago Botanic Garden in Glencoe, Ed Curran, CBS2 News.